Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome here to the Launchpad and our live launch coverage of SpaceX Starlink 6-27, launching from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name's Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the Launchpad, and here at TLP, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together, and we're glad to have you joining us here live for another launch from the Space Coast. SpaceX now averaging one launch every three days from the space coast and just earlier this evening elon saying they are going to go for one launch every two days starting next year so it's going to get even busier uh, if you're just joining though welcome we got people tuning in from all over the world we got ashley in buffalo new york we got chris in temecula california we got robin in denver justin's in mississippi we got alan from canada mike's in vancouver great to see some fellow canadians uh, we got bud in oxnard california david's in death valley uh, and we have uh, Kistini, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, in West Hollywood, and Siberian is in Maryland. As we continue to count down now uh, for tonight's launch, T minus six minutes, about 40 seconds and counting. We are just waiting for SpaceX to begin their live uh, view uh, of Slick 40 here this evening. And once they do so, we will, of course, patch that in to bring you that latest view for tonight's launch spacex now only broadcasting on x but we're glad to have you joining us here on our social media uh you may be watching us over on twitter twitch or x as well uh, or on facebook but we're glad to have you joining us all here on youtube we are patching in their live view and are waiting to see that live view of Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, which is going to look a little bit different tonight. And I'm sure they're going to put do some camera views specifically for it. Uh, but Slick 40 has now been... Uh, equipped with its crew access arm for the first time spacex now has two crew capable pads on the space coast now there's lots of testing and finalization on slick 40 for it to fully be brought online by early next year uh to be capable of holding crew but we have now seen that crew access arm installed and some incredible photos from spacex of that crew access arm bringing on a new era for slick 40 justin thank you so much for that super chat really do appreciate your support we got lots of people tuning in. We got Mark in Indiana. Abhishek, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, in India. Vicky is in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we got Joe Dog in Tennessee on his mobile. Great to have you, Joe. Thanks for being here. Daniel is in Oklahoma. And uh, we're going to continue counting down towards tonight's launch now. Just about five minutes in counting till launch until Falcon 9 Booster 1073 flies for its 11th time, having previously supported SES-22, the iSpace Hakuto R Mission 1, uh, Hippasat Amazonius Nexus Mission CRS-27, and six previous Starlink satellites. And there is that live view of Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. And you can see it just peeking out from the backside of the tower, that new crew access arm. Uh, the Slick 40 expected to support both crew and cargo missions as early as the beginning of next year. And uh, there's big questions. Who will be the first launch from the new pad? Who will christen that new white room and sign the new right, uh, white room wall? Will it be AX3? Because we did hear that they are now targeting no earlier than January, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, a really kind of spooky Halloween view here from Slick40. Uh, looking up, you can see that crew access arm just a little bit better as we are now into strong back retract. Now that they finished the major construction of the tower, they are adjusting some of their cameras back to their original positions uh, and to new positions. Listening into the mission control net as we go through the final minutes of the count. The autonomous drone ship just read the instructions. It is stationed downrange on the Atlantic Ocean, ready to rec recover today's booster. Today's mission is currently targeting 12.05 a.m. Eastern Time, or about 3 minutes 40 seconds from now. They do have uh, six other backup opportunities extending all the way to 2.59 a.m. Eastern. Uh, they had eight and eight more tomorrow uh, should they be required and eight more on Thursday. But we're, of course, hoping we don't have to use those. We did have one slip of the schedule to earlier and we are now well into propellant load. Now coming down three minutes, 20 seconds and counting till launch. As always, if you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us. We'll also be answering your comments and questions live through today's countdown. So you can send those in the chat by taking us at the launch pad, and we will work on answering those live. 
We are, of course, also counting down to the next launch of Starship from SpaceX, Starship IFT-2, now targeting no earlier than the middle of November, with some things folk pointing towards a launch attempt possibly next monday november 13th we do have our live countdown and status board up and running on the channel so make sure you check that out to see the latest on how everything's progressing through the faa launch license row closures marine and air closures and all of that we've got that all on our status board and that'll be running 24 7 as we continue through uh counting down and awaiting the next flight of starship if you'd like to help support what we do here at the Launchpad, take a moment, hit the join button down below here on YouTube. All of that goes back into supporting what we do, helping equip our rocket chasers, and bring you the best possible coverage of everything space. There is a great view of that new crew access arm uh, sticking out, giving us very much views like we've seen from Launchpad 39A uh, with its crew access arm. A little bit more of a robust um, structure where it attaches to the tower to support the strength of... Uh, of the arm but uh, great to see now into the final two minutes of the count we'll listen into mission control but as always let's see that go no go from the chat for tonight's launch you want to use those custom tlp uh crew emojis 99 cents a month gets you access to those t minus 90 seconds and counting next milestone we're waiting for is the confirmation from the launch director he will give a final go for launch around t-minus 45 seconds and counting vehicles and start up T minus 55 seconds and counting. The Falcon 9 vehicle has switched to the computers. SpaceX launch director, go for launch. And there's that call out. T minus 40 seconds and counting till launch. And the launch director has given his final go for launch. The vehicle now on internals, ready to lift off. T minus 30, T -minus 30 seconds 30 and seconds. counting. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, engines full power, and lift off of Starlink. Go Falcon, go Starlink. Vehicles pitching down range. Motion is following. And Falcon 9 Booster 1073 has launched for the 11th time from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Next major call will be Max Q. That's going to be the maximum aerodynamic pressure on the rocket, but let's listen to that rumble. Vehicle supersonic. Power and telemetry nominal. Max Q. And there you heard that call out of Max Q. That was the maximum peak mechanical stress on the first stage in the rocket. Now T plus one minute, 25 seconds into flight, now 60 seconds away from the first major sequence of events of today's flight, starting with Miko, or main engine cutoff, of the first stage. That'll be immediately followed by first and second stage separation and SES-1, or second engine start one, also known as MVAC ignition. That'll all begin two minutes, 25 seconds into flight. 32 seconds after SES-1, we will also have fairing deployment, 
As we continue, T plus one minute, 55 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 now traveling over 4,500 kilometers an hour, passing through 37 kilometers in altitude. Now just 20 seconds away from that sequence of events, listening in to the control net. Stage separation confirmed. In recognition. T plus three minutes, six seconds into flight. That first stage, first stage now having separated, second stage ignition, and there is that fairing deployment with 23 more Starlink satellites exposed to the vacuum of space. The first stage now having passed over the Kármán line, the second stage well on its way, three minutes, 25 seconds into flight. Next major milestone will be watching for the first stage to reach its apogee. That normally occurs about 116, 117 kilometers in altitude. So keep a close eye on the speed and altitude indicators there on the bottom left corner. The second stage now passing over 9,000 kilometers an hour, passing 120 kilometers into altitude. Satellite deployment will occur one hour, four minutes, 49 seconds into flight tonight. SpaceX won't be covering that live, but will confirm it via their X channel. There will be one extra burn of the MVAC ignition once we have SECO-1 following booster landing. SES-2 will occur 53 minutes, 19 seconds into flight, and will last a total of just three seconds, finalizing the orbit ahead of deployment. If you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. We'll work on answering those live. If you haven't yet, make sure you engage that subscribe button here on YouTube so you never miss another live launch coverage. Docking, undocking, or return to Earth. We've got a busy couple of months for the last bit of the year here, and we hope to have you join us. And we've got a big year planned for 2024. Excited to take you to some new places. We also will be releasing soon an interview with Stoke Space on our second channel, Launchpad News. That's where we bring you space news updates, exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews. And next year, we'll be starting to bring you factory tours as well. We've got some of those lined up. We're super excited to take you along. T plus four minutes, 55 seconds into flight. Everything continuing to look nominal. The next milestone will be six minutes, six seconds into flight. That's when the first stage entry burn will begin. We did miss the I did miss the call there, but the first stage has reached its apogee, is now descending back down towards Earth. You can see there on the left side of your screen a live view from inside the inner stage of the first stage. On the right side of view of the MVAC engine on the second stage. Five minutes, 22 seconds into flight. The first stage now coming back below the Kármán line, beginning its journey down to the drone ship. Just read the instructions. That first stage entry burn expected to begin six minutes, six seconds into flight. We're about 25 seconds from now. You can see there on the left side of your screen the vehicle preparing for that entry burn. That burn set to last 22 seconds this evening, helping slow the vehicle down, but also protecting it through atmospheric re-entry. Listening in to the control nets for a call out of first stage entry burn startup and shutdown. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage two, FTS has saved. And there you saw that entry burn killing off a lot of speed from the first stage, now descending through 36 kilometers in altitude. 
First stage landing burn set to begin 7 minutes 52 seconds into flight or about 60 seconds from now. That burn will last a total of about 25-30 seconds as the first stage booster, Booster 1073, attempts to land for the 11th time, this time on SpaceX's autonomous drone ship, just read the instructions, stationed about 600 kilometers downrange in the Atlantic Ocean. 7 minutes 12 seconds into flight, the second stage passing 160 kilometers in altitude, 18,500 kilometers and increasing per hour. Second stage now under 8 kilometers, still lots of speed to burn off, but waiting for that call out of landing burn start, now just 20 seconds away, listening into the control net. Stage one landing burn. Stage one landing leg deploy. And touchdown of Falcon 9 booster 1073. After supporting 11 missions, this was its seventh Starlink mission. We're waiting maybe to hear the call out of Seco 1, but that's going to wrap up SpaceX's live views for today's common uh, for launch of SpaceX Starlink 6 27. If it was your first time here, though, welcome here at the launch pad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And there's Seco 1. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe so you never miss another live launch coverage. Also, join us over on our TLP Discord. It's totally free to join. That's where our community hangs out in between launches. Uh, but that is going to do it for us. We're going to send you over to our live Starship IFT2 status board and countdown as we continue to count down to the next possible launch attempt of Starship for its second integrated flight. Lots of things still have to happen, but the world is getting excited to see Starship fly again. That is going to do it for us from our TLP Canada studio. My name's Zach, and we'll see you next time because space is better together. Good night.